right guys so this is the blitz controller that was made by big big one so this controller works for nintendo switch and pc this controller also comes with its own docking station has four programmable back buttons 14 macro switches for those people who love those mechanical clicks and a nice little rubberized grip so looks like this controller um rubberized grip um, supports Amiibos for Switch. That's actually big, I didn't even know that. And for four programmable buttons is what it's um, advertising. Controller does support Bluetooth connection. I doesn't say if it's Bluetooth 4.0 or Bluetooth 5.0, hopefully it's 5.0. And yeah, doesn't say so. Oh, it also supports on uh, gyro access. Can wake up your Nintendo Switch, which apparently everybody loves when a switch controller can wake up your Nintendo switch seems to be a really big deal but i don't know why so without further ado let's open this controller get this thing open and let's see what's inside and right there you get the controller actually i like keeping these by the way these um whenever you're traveling around i always like keeping these and just popping these back onto controllers to keep the joysticks protected when I'm traveling, so, but yeah. Um, yeah, so this is a controller right here, and I have to say it's extremely clicky. Like, I don't know if you guys can hear this, but. Yep, like all the buttons on here are mechanical clicks. Even the two back programmable buttons are mechanical click, and it looks like you get two extra programmable buttons right here that are also mechanical. So yeah, this is all around a mechanical controller for Nintendo Switch and for PC. This is actually really nice. So let's check this out. So this is the docking station right here and um, it's uh, pretty small. Yeah. So I guess if I was to dock this, I would set this. So the docking station, you set like this and set it like, like this on here. So. You set this on and you put your controller on top like this and that's how your controller docks onto the docking station. I was a little confused for a second, but yep, got it. Just like that. And let's see what else is in the box. Looks like you get a uh, USB A to USB C cable, of course. So unplug that. Um, I will say that this cable is definitely a one meter slash three feet cable. Yeah, one meter, about three feet. It's not that long. I guess it's used to plug the dock station into your Sitch or into your um, or into your PC, and you get a mod and you get a pamphlet with telling you all the buttons. Uh, pamphlet just tells you turn on and off connections, modes, remap, turbo, macro recording, and onboard configurations. So yeah, that's pretty much it. So that's cool. So. This controller doesn't support any software, so you're definitely gonna have to read this pamphlet to learn how to program this controller correctly. But then also, I'm still gonna go through it just so that way you guys would know. But yeah, overall, um, really nice quality build controller. Oh, these are not analog um, triggers, by the way. They're just micro switches. So this goes from like zero to 100. So I don't know, that could be a downside, but for Nintendo Switch people, they don't really have analog triggers anyway. So that's not a big deal, but yeah, let me um, do some, run some tests on this controller, input latency test, um, joystick accuracy, and just play some games and let's see how this controller feels. So without further ado, um, let's move on with this video. All right guys, so here we are in gamepadtester.com and we are gonna be testing the joystick accuracy of the Big Big One Blitz controller. As you see, I have the controller right here and the sticks snap perfectly back to 0 0.0002. So without further ado, let's do an input lane. I mean, not input, let's do a joystick accuracy test real quick. So one spin and 2.7, 2.8. That's actually not that bad. So yeah, very accurate joysticks and uh, they snap back to zero to 0 0.0002, which is actually really cool. But one thing about this controller is that by default, they do have their um, controller like dead zones already preset. You can actually turn that off if you push this middle button right here, plus the left joystick and then click um, this and the right joystick as well to turn it off. So let's turn these, um, let's turn zero dead zone mode on and let's just see what happens. So now that I turn both of them on, all right. So now I got the true accurate description of both joysticks. And as you see, 
they're not zero they're not point zero 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 two anymore but they're not too bad off either overall i'll have to say like these control this controller has some pretty accurate joysticks and i probably will leave zero dead zone mode on just because of yeah this is um yeah a lot more sustainable and it's not too far off from the center where it should impact gameplay so yeah i'll definitely leave it off all right guys so here we are in the x input tester so we're going to be testing the uh input latency of this controller right now i have this controller hooked up to my pc via bluetooth and let's see how good the input latency is on this controller i really hope it's really low let's find out all right i have a lot of sevens a lot of 14s this is not good I am not liking these numbers I'm seeing. I should not be seeing double digit numbers when doing an input latency test. All right, so it looks like this controller has an average uh, input latency of 12 with a pulling rate of 78. Maximum of 45 and a minimum of five millisecond input latency. And scrolling up this list, I can see that the numbers are quite bit all over the place. Like I can see that this controller is trying to hit an eight millisecond input latency, but then again, you start seeing these like 14 millisecond input latencies, 15 and even like 22 millisecond input latencies. I have to say like this controller is not all that great when it comes to the wireless connection. Let's hope this controller does better with the wire connection. All right, guys. So here I am with the controller, um, have a wire connection now. So let's see how good the input latency is with the wire connection. Oh God, this is so much better. Three input second in, input latency? All right, so it looks like it got 3.8, 3.9. So my average is 4.056 input uh, latency with a pulling rate of 246. This is so much better compared to the wireless um, input latency test. So yeah, if you are gonna use this controller on PC, I would highly recommend you use a wire connection over a wireless connection because that wireless connection it sucks and also the worst thing about this is you can't even overclock this controller so you can't adjust the pulling rate for the wireless connection which is an extreme bummer so if you are having this controller for your Nintendo switch wirelessly i know wirelessly it doesn't matter because of their input latency and a lot of their controllers are pretty garbage but if you're using this controller on pc definitely go with a wire connection. Pairing this controller with your PC or Nintendo switch is easy so if you're pairing it to your pc what you want to do is hold the guy button and the b button and you will tell that this controller is in X input mode because the LEDs will be green indicating that the controller is in X input mode. Holding the guide button in A will allow the controller to turn on into Nintendo Switch Pro mode and you can tell that it's in the switch mode because the LEDs will be red on the controller. And as you see now my controller is used for a Nintendo Switch right now. This controller can save up to four different profiles and you can easily switch between them with this profile button right here. So all you gotta do is push the button here and it will switch between one of the four profiles. All right, so programming the mappable buttons is actually really easy. All you gotta do is push this button right here plus one of the uh, mappable buttons at the same time. You'll see that the light is breathing and waiting for an input and I'm gonna make B my input. And there you go. Now this back button's mapped to the B button on my controller. Very easy and very simple. Now, if you want to program macros on the programmable buttons, you can by simply holding down this button right here, plus one of the mappable buttons for three seconds. You will notice that the LED in the middle for that fin button will start um, light breathing. So all you wanna do is just record your inputs, then push the mappable button in again, and there you go. Now you have your programmable button. Now, I believe that this is probably only up to like 12 inputs that it can program for macros, but it's a pretty useful thing for anyone who wants to make macros for their controller. Okay, if you wanna set turbo mode for one of the buttons on this controller, that's also like a very easy thing to do. All you gotta do is push this button right here on the far left of the controller, plus any correspond button that you wanna have turbo mode for at the same time. And now you have turbo mode, as you can see. Now, there's also a cool thing is you can adjust the how many clicks per second for turbo mode by holding the FN button and pressing the left key you can cycle between five a second, five inputs a second, doing it again, make it 10 inputs a second, and then doing it one more time, makes it 20 inputs a second. So for those people who like to use turbo mode and probably like the cheating Mario party or whatever, this is how you can set turbo mode for this controller. And also for all the uh, programmable stuff I showed you on the controller, all you have to do is double click on the bottom bar and that will 
clear up all of the programming settings that you have for your controller. Okay, so I've been using this Blitz controller for some time now, and I can honestly say that like for the Nintendo Switch, I actually think the, the Big Big One Blitz controller is an excellent controller for your Nintendo Switch with all the mapple buttons on there, all the mechanical keys and the four profiles, and the fact that it can wake up you on Nintendo Switch and has the Amiibo some more, it's a great controller for a Nintendo Switch. Now, if you want to use this controller for PC, I do suggest like that you use this controller only in wired mode. Using this controller in wireless mode on PC, I definitely have noticed input latency issues with this controller, especially like in games like when I was playing Call of Duty. I can tell that this controller was having some input errors and I had a hard time aiming down sights and hitting enemies, which sucked. And also just playing some other games, I kind of noticed that like there was a little bit of an input latency with this controller. So yeah, that kind of sucks. But when I do plug this controller in directly into my PC using the wire connection, I didn't, I experienced no input latencies whatsoever. So if you do get this controller for Nintendo Switch and thinking that this will also work on PC, I mean, it can work on PC. Just be mindful to use a wire connection rather than a wireless connection. So overall, I will have to say like, I kind of got like, two ratings for this controller. If you want to use this controller for the Nintendo Switch, I will say the Big Big One Bliss controller is a solid 8 out of 10. Now, if you want to use this thing for PC, I will give this thing a 6 out of 10. Overall, like, like I said before, this controller is great for Nintendo Switch. I think a Nintendo Switch was its main um, platform that this controller should be used on. It's cool that it can work on PC as well, but the, again, the wireless connection with this controller kind of sucks. So you better off using a wire connection with this controller, or if you plan on trying to look for a PC controller, you might want to probably look. There are some other better options that don't have wireless input latency issues like this controller does, unfortunately. But yeah, that's my thoughts for the Big Big One Blitz controller. All right guys, so that is it for this controller review. If you made it this far into the video and you found this video very helpful, you should do me a favor and hit that like button for me. And also don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel because I have another controller review coming out pretty soon that is a long time in the making. So don't forget to like, subscribe, and also hit that notification bell. And until then, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.